Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Soumya Harikrishna. We are dealing with the chapter Improvement in Food Resources. We completed Agricultural Part. Today onwards, we will be discussing Animal Husbandry. What is Animal Husbandry? Animal Husbandry is the scientific management of livestock. That includes three aspects, feeding, breeding and disease control. Means we have to three main three aspects scientifically. Their feeding should be in a proper way. Their breeding should be done also scientifically to improve new varieties. And their disease control also necessary. So which all animals are included in this? Mainly cattle, goat, sheep, poultry, fish and also beekeeping we include in this. We know when our lifestyle is changing. The demand for milk, meat and egg is increasing day by day. So, in order to cope up with the demand, we have to adopt new strategies in the field of animal husbandry also. So, along with these improvements that we are making in this field, we have to go for a humane treatment of these animals. We are first discussing cattle farming or dairy management. So, mainly the cattle are reared for two purposes, either for milk or for doing farm labor. Based on that, we categorize them into two categories. First is called a milch animals. Milch animals are the females which yield milk, that is called a dairy farming. Whereas animals or males are used for doing farm labor, they are the beasts of burden and they are used for tilling, irrigation and uh, cutting. So they, those animals come under the category draft animals. So two categories are there, milch animals and uh, draft animals. Then Indian species of these cattle belong to two species. Indian cows fall into the uh, species that is Bos indicus whereas Indian buffaloes come under the uh, category that is Bos bubalis. So scientific name of Indian cow is Bos indicus. Scientific name of Indian buffaloes is Bos bubalis. The milk production mainly depends upon the lactation period. Lactation period means the duration of milk production after the birth of a calf. So the longer the duration of the lactation period better the profit for the farmer. So usually exotic varieties, exotic species means the cattle from the foreign land. So those animals have high lactation period. That is we, if we consider two exotic species like Jersey and Brown Swiss and all, they have lactation period ranging from 6000 to 8000 liters per annum. On an average the cow can produce almost 24 liters of milk per day. Whereas when it comes to Indian varieties, Indian the best breeds are Red Sindhi and uh, Sahiwal. So these have the lactation capacity of maximum 2000 liters. So the exotic varieties have maybe 3 or 4 times more lactation capacity than the Indian varieties. What we can do to increase the capacity of the milk production of these animals? One way we can bring the exotic varieties to here but that is not feasible because the climatic conditions and geographical conditions are different which may not support the life of these animals. So what we can do is to crossbreed these animals with the Indian varieties. So when we crossbreed the Swiss variety or the exotic variety is taken as the female because it has got the lactation period. Indian breed with the disease resistant capacity is chosen as the male parent so that the breeding will result in a very good calf. So sometimes we get the qualities in the same calf so they can, we can breed those varieties again and again. So uh, this example you have to study exotic species Jersey and Swiss, indigenous varieties or Indian varieties or local varieties are it's in the end Sahibo. Now the proper housing of the animal is also important. We have to make sure that we are maintaining proper hygiene and cleanliness in the area of shelter. These both are important for the health of the cattle as well as the good production of milk. Now when we make a cattle shed, we have to see a few things. First of all, it should be well ventilated and also roofed so that the, it can be protected from the rain, cold or a, a sun. At the same time, the floor of the shed should be sloping or slanting so that cleaning is easy and it will always remain dry. Then we have to give a bait to the animal almost regularly and also we have to brush their hair to loosen the hair or remove any parasites and uh, uh, dirt. So if, the, if you take care of all these aspects to a greater extent we can increase the milk production also. The second aspect of uh, animal husbandry is feeding. So when we consider the dairy animals, the feeding or the food requirements are of two types. First is the maintenance requirement, second is the milk producing requirement. That is, usually when the cattle is living, in order to maintain the life and proper health, 
regular feed is necessary that is coming under maintenance requirement that means daily nourishment usually we give fiber rich uh, food to the animal during that time but in addition to that during lactation period uh, special nutrients are required that is milk re producing requirement so maintenance requirement means regular feed and at the same time during lactation period say, uh, special type of supplement should be given so based on that feed can be two types one is roughage other one is concentrate Roughage means large amount of fiber, grass, uh, hay and all for directly to the animal, either in the fresh form or the dry forms, the leaves. Whereas in the case of uh, the concentrates, concentrate means it is low in fiber but rich in protein and uh, other nutrients. At the same time, we also give additional supplements like micronutrients in order to maintain the health and increase the milk output. The third aspect of dairy farm management is the disease control. So these animals usually get some diseases. So how do we know that the animal is sick? The healthy animal has got two characteristics. One maintains good posture. Second it feeds well. That means if the animal is not standing or not maintaining the normal posture, always lying down and all, we can uh, infer that the animal is not healthy. Second if it is not taking food like normal, that also another uh, way of letting us know that it is sick. So which are the uh, infections that the animal can get, especially parasites. Parasites can be within the body called endoparasites or outside the body called exoparasites. There are certain worms living in the stomach and intestine. They can trouble the animal. At the same time, flukes are there which can trouble or the attack the liver cells also. Now coming to the external surface, there can be uh, ticks or uh, lice and other parasites or fungal infections. Apart from this, the animals may get viral and bacterial diseases. So maintenance of proper hygiene is required for the uh, prevention of diseases and also vaccination can prevent many viral and bacterial diseases in animals. So if we can take care of these three aspects that we discussed, breeding, feeding and disease control, we can get good profit from dairy management. The next category under animal husbandry is poultry farming. So poultry farming is undertaken to raise domestic fowls for egg and chicken meat. Here we are raising the animals or growing the breeds for two purposes. Based on that two breeds of uh, birds are there. First layers. Layers are here for getting eggs. At the same time the next category broilers are here for getting meat. So the meat demand is also increasing day by day. So in this case also in order to improve the variety we can go for breeding. Here also breeding is done between exotic species or the foreign species with the indigenous or local variety. Example of one exotic bird is Lagoon and it is crossed with the indigenous variety called the Asi. Now when we are breeding these birds, we keep in mind certain desirable traits. First, number and quality of chicks. We need more young ones in the production. At the same time, their quality also should be high according to our need. Dwarf broiler parents for commercial chick production means broilers need to be dwarfed so that they can be fatty but at the same time don't take much nutrients for becoming bigger. We basically need their body weight. But in the case of the birds that we are using as parents, they can be dwarfed at the same time give good quality chickens. Third aspect or third desirable trait is summer adaptability or tolerance to high temperature. Because these animals or the birds basically get diseases during summer season. So to, if they are tolerant to the summer season or the temperature, to a greater extent they can be healthy also. Next is low maintenance requirements. With poultry we keep large number of birds in huge farms, right? thousands of them will be within a single shed. So uh, low maintenance requirement is another aspect of poultry farming. Now the last desirable trait is reduction in the size of the egg laying birds means here we are not looking at the meat quality we want more eggs so they need not be huge in size so we want small birds but their egg laying capacity should be high and this, at the same time they should feed on very cheap uh, feed that we are formulating using agricultural byproducts means whatever we are getting from the field from that we are making the feed for this and they should feed on this and get maximum output so these are the desirable traits that we look for when we are breeding this exotic species with the indigenous species now when we talk about their maintenance the broiler is fed with a vitamin rich or protein rich supplements 
the protein content is kept very high in their feed and also vitamin A and K are also very high. This will give good growth rate and a feed efficiency. The second thing we have to take the precautions or the measures to reduce mortality. Death rate should be very less in this case. And also their carcass quality should be high. Carcass means dead body because we are using the meat of the dead animal or the dead of, uh, bird. So the carcass quality should be high in this case. Maintenance of feathering is also important. What is the importance of feathering? Feathering is actually directly related to the reproductive ability of a bird. The management practices include maintenance of optimum temperature within the poultry farm. We have to see proper hygienic condition within the farm. Also give the proper feed to these birds and vaccination will of course help us to prevent diseases. The birds are affected by bacteria, fungi, virus, parasites and uh, sometimes worms. So in such cases we have to maintain proper hygiene, clean the area and also sanitize them. At the same time vaccination is also a good measure. Hope you understood the lesson well. Thank you for watching my video. If you like my videos please like share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion.